In this video, I'll show you how to make a contingency table or a two-way table for two categorical variables. First, we'll start with data inside of Google Sheets. I have two variables, the variable are you married with the answers of yes and no, and then the variable which of these colors do you like best, where students had to pick one of the following color options. So first, we need to decide what's going to be our rows and columns. I notice that there's a lot of colors here, so I think I'll choose the colors to be the rows of my contingency table. So what colors do I have? I could list them just by looking down the spreadsheet and seeing what colors I see, or I could sort the data. The way that I'll do that is I'm going to sort by the other variable first, and then the variable I'm interested in second. I'll show you why. So click on the little down arrow that's on the right side of any of the columns in Google Sheets. When you click on it, you can choose the option about halfway down the list, sort sheet A to Z, and it will sort the data and all of the yeses and nos will be moved around according to all of the colors. You can see how the numbers have switched their orders. All right, now I'm gonna sort the colors. I'll choose the down arrow, sort A to Z, and you may notice that we have lost our column titles because those have also been sorted alphabetically. Right now they're at the bottom. So when I look at my colors, I can see what ones there are. Scrolling back up to the top, I see that we have a black as a favorite color, blue, green, and I'm just gonna type them in the columns. Orange, pink, purple, red and turquoise. So in your contingency table, you can pick any order you want for the colors. You could go in rainbow order, you could put them in alphabetical order. I have mine in alphabetical order. It doesn't actually matter what order your data are in unless there is some sort of ordering to your variables, such as not at all, somewhat, most of the time that you would want to keep in order but if there is no inherent sense of order you can put the colors in any order you like all right so those are my colors then my other variable has the options of yes or no so i'll say yes for the first column and no for the other column so the way to remember the rows and columns is think of greek columns so the yeses form a column the nos form a column so that's your column variable even though when you write out your labels, they fit into a row. So there's kind of this opposite thing happening. The colors are listed in the column, but each color forms its own row. Now it's time to put in the counts into each of the cells of the spreadsheet. So I need to go through and count how many people answered yes and were also picking black as their favorite color. So if I look at all the black responses, I can look over to the left hand side and realize that all of those students said no. So how many students was that? I can count them up one by one with my finger looking at the monitor, or I can go down to the lower right of the spreadsheet and notice that it says count is six. So in the cell that is no crossed with black, I will put six students and there were zero yeses. I can also make a total. Let's do that now total six students. I'll put a total for the row variables too. All right, so now we'll go to the next color. We have the color blue, highlight all the cells, so I just clicked and dragged. And down on the right, I see that there are 25 students who thought blue was their favorite color. And then if I looked for the yeses and nos, I can see that there's a whole lot of nos, but there's specifically one, two, three, four yeses. So I'll put four for yes and blue, and then, oh, what was my total again? Look it back up, 25. So 25 total, and then you can do the subtraction. So 25 minus four, it means 21 people said no and also had blue as their favorite color. You can also directly count. All right, let's go to the next color. We have green, there are 24 Students who said green was their favorite, but only two yeses. So 
So 2 plus 22 makes 24. You'll notice that there's a lot of subtraction and adding to get your contingency table set up. So I'm going to go through and compute all the rest of the counts for this contingency table. All right, I have my yeses and nos and totals figured out for all of the colors. I do need to figure out a total for the number of students married and a total for the students that aren't married. So I'm going to use a formula to do that. I'm going to use the formula sum, which adds up any cells that you want. So you type in equals SUM, open your parentheses, and then you click and drag over all the cells that you want to add up. So I clicked in the black, dragged all the way down to turquoise, released, close my parentheses, push enter, and I have 13 students who are married out of my sample. Now we can repeat the same thing with no, equals sum, open parentheses, click and drag, close parentheses, push enter. So the way a contingency table works is that you're just sorting students into different buckets. Whether you have lots of small buckets or just a few big buckets, you're still going to have the same number of students no matter how you're sorting them. So when I see that I have my yes and no columns, there's a total of 103 students, which should be the same as the total here in all of my rows. And when I highlighted all of those numbers, notice that down in the corner, it gave me an option. Mine is set to sum, so it added up those counts for the different colors and came up with 103, which matches our other total, which is great. If you don't see sum right away, click on the little down arrow, and then you can pick from different statistics. Maybe you want counts, maybe you want sums, pick whatever you need. So just to confirm, in two ways we have found that there's 103 students. In your table you might feel like making the totals bolded, kind of makes them stand out a little bit. Maybe also make the columns have bold words and rows. You can also put lines around all the boxes. So you can click your entire table and then go to the borders button and then choose the borders for all borders. There we go. Or you can only have some of them boarded if you like. All right. So now we have a contingency table. It has yeses and nos and totals, and we can see how many people were not married and liked purple or any other combination. One other thing we may want to adjust on our table is the alignment. So for our columns, I'm going to highlight the three columns, and then I'm going to choose a different alignment. So up here in the menu bar, there's a, like a, a stack of lines. Pick the down arrow and then you can choose to have everything left aligned, center aligned, or right aligned. I'm going to choose center aligned. I think that looks good. There's other things you can do. You can make them colors and shading, but this gets you the basics of a contingency table.